Have you heard that? Uh, th there's that documentary about that guy that was putting artificial tracheas in people. Mm -mm. Oh, this is good or bad. It's horrifying. It was this like genius doctor that was putting in these plastic. He had this uh, this like breakthrough that you could just replace a trachea with a plastic tracheal tube and bathe it in stem cells. And it would eventually like, I don't know what, like meld into your body's DNA tissue and just mm. become a part of your body. But he was making it up. It oh, did God. not ever, it did not work one time. Oh, no. But he was just like flying around the world, this like medical, like master. They're going, this genius, the genius of our time, winning like Nobel Prizes and stuff. And just people were dying left oh. and right because they were just putting a fucking tube into people's throat instead of a trachea. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How many did he do before they got him? It, it was like a half a dozen or something Ooh. like that. Yeah, it was really not. So he's just an insane person. In this weird way, I mean, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. He was a genius, but he was like a mad, he'd become a mad genius. where He, he just was, blew a fuse. He blew a fuse, yeah. And he thought, I have an idea. There's no way my idea won't work if, oh I, just, my God. if I just do it enough times. Oh, oh yeah, Macarena. And simultaneously, he was uh, hustling a woman um, like he was pretending to be married to, to uh, a journalist in America. And then he was already married in Italy. So he was like kind of had two different madman thing going on at once. <laughs> He's a wild dude. Yeah. Swedish appealed court uh, convicted Macaroni on Wednesday and sentenced him to two and a half years in prison. That's it? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, Sweden. It, once there's a wall up where you're a medical professional, I guess there is a little bit of an arm's length. I mean, these people did know they were doing an experimental um, surgery and that they could die, I guess. But they didn't know that it definitely wouldn't work. But they obviously decided that he did something wrong. They put him in jail for two and a half years. Yeah, this guy was a wild one. Jesus Christ. Compulsive liar, spinning wild stories, and manipulating a woman who became his fiance. The appeal court ruled that two of the three patients who died did not require emergency intervention. Oh, my God. That was the part I forgot. It oh, kept, my God. It kept failing. This is the most fucked up part, Joe. It kept failing on sick people that needed new tracheas. So he was like, what I need to do is find a relatively healthy person that has a tracheal issue, like a collapsed trachea or something where they're still like walking through the world with relative health, like the oyster guy. And I'll put it in them, and that will prove that the thing works. Oh, my God. What a psycho. Is there that is. him? Yeah, he that's looks him. looks like a psycho. It looks like, like George Clooney if he got really fat and did a lot of <laughs> opium. <laughs> what a psycho. Yeah, it's crazy. To do it on relatively healthy people just to prove that it works? And it completely did oh. not. So he went. He literally went on a, a worldwide quest to find somebody with like a fucked up trachea, but that would w didn't wasn't sick, and found someone like that, and she it was like cosmetic for her. And she's like, "I'm tired of talking like this, and I have to have like a scarf on." And okay, I'll do it. She didn't like the way her trachea looked. No, I think she like talked weird, and she had issues for sure. Okay, but she but it was not life or death. Oh my god. Anyway, there's some psychos out there, man. Some of them happen to be doctors. Yeah. Just because someone went to medical school doesn't mean they're not crazy. No, I oh, I, I listened to that Dr. Death podcast. Do you ever hear that? No. It's about a guy who was like, he was a neurosurgeon and he was just like, I, it, it wasn't clear if he was like Dr. Mengele, like wanted to kill people or if he was just like a stupid person that was just like sl slashing in people's bodies. Like it wasn't clear what he was doing, but it looked like when he would open someone up. He had no idea what he was doing. I mean, he just was like stapling a artery to a bone. He just like, and just I, for fun. Who, nobody really knows. But he was this, a real surgeon. He was a real neurosurgeon. And until I heard that podcast, it would have never occurred to me to go to a surgeon and then m look him up. I, I'm sure you right. are savvy enough to do that. But I would have just been like, "You're a doctor. I, right. You must know things." Okay, open up my brainstem and get in there. Yeah, the first time I got surgery, I, had, I have I had no idea anything about the doctor's credentials and i don't know anything about him now yeah i don't even remember his name he put me under and opened me up and drilled holes in my bones and yeah now i i heard that i would i would always google i would i would go yeah, deeper yeah man you you can't be fucking entirely sure that someone's not out of their mind well there's certain there's certain um professions like that where you assume their degree is the thing that makes them competent but you forget that it's just a person they here's here's the guy it says of the 37 patients dunched how do you say it dunched oh dunched yeah david dunch dunched operated on in dallas over about two years 33 were hurt or harmed in the process 33, 33 out of 37 that is a bad four record. people skated clean some people woke up paralyzed 
Others emerged from anesthesia to permanent pain and nerve damage, from nerve damage. Two patients died, one from significant blood loss after the operation, and the other from a stroke caused by a cut verbal arter, a vertebral artery. Wow. Yeah, he was just slashing. He was in there just like mashing it up, kind of like preschool style. Look at this one. One patient, a childhood friend of Dunst, went in for a spinal operation with someone he trusted and woke up a quadriplegic after the doctor damaged his verte vertebral artery, artery. That was his like be childhood best friend. Oh, my God. Turn him into a quadriplegic. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's psychos out there, man. Is that him? No. That's the guy that plays yeah, him in the, in, in the TV show? show. Yeah. That's Josh Jackson. Uh, Get a real photo of this. There boy was another doctor death. There was a guy who created execution machines. There was a documentary about him. It's a crazy documentary because at the end he kind of gets hoodwinked into becoming a Holocaust denier. Oh, I know about this guy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. keep tabs on all of them. Yeah, he would. I think he's gone now. But I think at the end of his life, like he was somehow or another brought to Auschwitz or one, yes. of, the, one of the other concentration camps. I remember camps. this guy, yes. And he said that this could not have been... It's impossible have that Zyklon yeah. B could have... Yeah, I saw this documentary. Yeah. Oh, it was Errol Morris film. Yeah, I remember this guy. So what was his assertion? He cl claims he was invited to other American prisons, expected design modifications to electric chairs possessed no relevant formal training or education and claims that he was told that those who did possess such qualifications would not provide advice due to their opinions on death penalty, fear of reprisals, or that they were squeamish about the subject. So, so he was, what was he? What was his background? Just could, could you let it hear it? So it's, it, his career continued with other state prisons seeking his advice on execution facilities other than electrocution, such as gas chambers, hanging, and lethal injection. How do you say his name? Luch, Luchter? Luchter initially professed his ignorance of other methods of execution. The authorities seeking his advice reminded him that others with more qualifications refused to help. Luchter claims to have taught himself on these other methods of execution and provided advice that was used by the authorities to improve safety and efficiency. So as Fall claimed when Luchter claimed to have been sought as a witness for the defense for Ernest Zundel during, so one of the Nazis, right, in Canada for spreading false news by publishing and sending material denying Holocaust overseas. Luchter was asked by the defense to travel to Poland to visit out so that, no, maybe that guy wasn't a Nazi. Maybe he was like a Holocaust denier. Ernst Zundel. So what is the trial? 